Hi, this is Brian Hegney, instructor of Game and Interactive Media Design. I lied to you. I told you we would start making the other parts of the table, but what I want to do first is actually group this together and... Uh, well, what I want to do first is I guess I'm going to turn this into... No, I'm going to make these look more like wood. That's what I'm going to do. Um, and in, in so doing, we're going to look at two things. We're going to look at the edit poly modifier, and we are going to look at switch looping on the ribbon. So let's go ahead and do that. Click on one of these. Now, here's the thing. This is what you need. All new beginning 3D Max modelers are going to have to keep an eye out for. If you are in the select and move mode, so like you've tapped W and you're able to move. If you left click and move your mouse a little, oops, you just destroyed like the perfectness that you have been working towards. So I'm going to hit control Z to go back in time. So it's just be very careful about what you select. And if you move something again, oops, left click or control Z back. And so it's really important if you're going to start selecting things to use the select object tool. Disable your select and move mode and select your um, select object tool. And when you do that, in the select object tool, obviously we have our marquee selection. It defaults to that. And just so you know, that option, um, since we're talking about selecting objects now, let's go ahead and talk about it. There are two very important things to note. They're up here under, for me, they're under the word modifiers at the top. Our toolbar shows a selection region style. If you hold your mouse button down on that button, you can see, hey, you can use a circle to select. You can use a polygon. So I'm left clicking and releasing, double clicking. Or there's my favorite, which is the freehand. And so you can just left click and draw. Um, a shape and the other very important thing to note here with the selection tools is whether it's in windows mode or crossing mode so if it's in window mode I'd have to it will only select what I completely encircle and so like this circle that I've made will only select the left four planks it will leave the right plank out of my selection because I I didn't fully encircle it whereas if we were in crossing mode that same window style crossing that last uh, plank on the right will select it. Very important to note, and I switch those so many times. Like, there's no one right way to do it. Um, it depends on what does your scene look like, how many objects are in your scene, what, is, what do the edge loops look like in your scene, and you'll see that as you move through um, your time 3D modeling. Okay, so let's go ahead and make a select this. Now, what I want to point out here is the command panel. And I'm going to drag it out. I'm going to left click, drag this command panel out a few modes. There we go. And I'm going to add a very important modifier. Do that by clicking the little drop down menu below your name of your object and scroll down until you see edit poly. Don't do edit mesh. Don't do edit normals or edit patch. Edit poly. This is a huge group of tools that we can use. Um, so many that it's going to take many, many, many months to go through them all. Um, what I'm concerned about right now, I'm, um, well, just, just to point out, we're not going to use these tools yet, but you can enable vertex selection mode and you can have access to your object's vertices. Like I can select this vertex and you can even move these verts up and down. And notice when I move the vertices of one object because they're instanced, they all update, and that's one of the reasons why I chose instance instead of clone, uh, instead of yeah, instead of copy. So if you if that doesn't happen for you, that's because when you shift dragged the piece, you might have chosen copy instead of instance. Um, I'm gonna cancel that because I don't want to do that. Likewise, if you are in edit poly mode and you enable edges, you can select an edge. You can move these edges as you want um, and face mode you can select that face whoops you can move these faces any way you want oops oops there we go and the element is like the 
not the entire thing because an object can be made up of multiple elements but for right now let's just call it you know the entire thing um, but we are not going to really do that we are going to use a tool called swift loop that is in the ribbon now before we use swift loop yeah before we use swift loop i'm going to show you what might happen um click the edit poly so that no there it is it's fine um make sure you don't have any of these sub objects selection modes enabled uh, like for instance if it's blue you know just deselect that add the turbo smooth modifier and you'll see what's going to happen if i add turbo smooth look what happens to these boxes to these planks and i'm going to tap f4 so i can see my edged faces and i'm going to increase the iterations of turbo smooth up to two just so you can see it's starting to smooth it but the problem is this doesn't look like a plank at all and if you look at the planks in this model or even if you look at wood in general right this wood it's actually not perfectly it doesn't have a perfect edge there and just like this metal um, these metal tubes don't have a perfect sharp edge and so what we're going to be doing in 3d studio max is learning how they actually made that rounded nature of this of this box right because essentially that's what that's what they did the people who modeled these made these edges a lot smoother okay so we're going to figure out how we do that for right now i'm going to turn off turbo smooth by clicking on the eyeball and going down to my edit poly and we are going to be using the swift loop tool yay so up here in your ribbon and if you don't see your ribbon click this little white arrow until you do see the ribbon um, i prefer working on it all out if it is collapsed and you prefer to do that just make sure you go to edit and find that swift loop and just click it to enable it again i like to see that it is enabled i'm going to click it there now when you have swift loop enabled if you hover over the edges of your object you're going to see it's going to add a loop swiftly yay and so what i'm going to do in order to keep the geometry box like um, each edge needs to have a few reinforcing edges around it and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a swift loop here 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 and here one at the bottom one at the top one on the side one on the side and then one right here um, and so i'm just going to left click come to the next one left click come to the next one left click come to the next one left click and come to the next one and left click and when i'm done i'm going to right click to disable the current tool right click disable swift loop and left click out in space and now if i turn on turbo smooth what you'll notice is that geometry is now um it's staying there it actually looks a little bit like uh the piece we saw in the in the photoshopped image and if I tap F4 to turn off edged surfaces or yeah. Now the other thing is why does this back end look different, right? So if I turn on and off edit poly, you can see what that poly did, what swift looping did, and I can turn um, off turbo smooth, turn on my edged faces. Now what's the difference? The difference is this edge loop I added at this end actually helps keep that shape um, whereas in this end that shape isn't as well kept and so all I'm gonna do is again turn off turbo smooth click on this edit poly click on the swift loop and just add that edge there and when I turn on oops when I turn that on again we can see that it's should be just as smooth yeah there it is now just for fun i like to do this we have a few more a uh, couple minutes i like to well you know what i'm gonna call this a wrap we'll look at what those edges do in the next video all right